Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is To Can Play That Game with a review of Beneath Nexus by Silver Clutch Games. So what is Beneath Nexus? Well let's take a look at the box. Ah, yeah this is another game coming to Kickstarter. In fact it's actually already at, on Kickstarter but they don't have boxes for their prototypes so I can't really talk about the box and how that keys into the game. But I have played the game, so I do know what it is and can tell you. And that is that it is a card-based dungeon crawl. Or at least that's how it's built. The nature of the game is that some of the players will take the roles of heroes who are exploring beneath Nexus. They will have to go through several encounters in different locations before finally reaching the Nexus Lord and defeating them. And that's like the big bad dungeon boss. So how does this all actually work mechanically? Well, why don't we take a look at the table for that? In Beneath Nexus, one player will take on the role of the Blight Lord. And so they'll get to pick one of the four available. They'll then need to get their Blight Lord's deck of cards and combine it with the general generic Blight Lord deck of cards. With the Blight Lord, sheets they have two sides they have the blight lord side which is what they'll use for the first two encounters and the blight lord master side which has a lot more rows and is much harder for the final encounter where they're fighting the blight lord directly so their starting hand will be two plus the number of heroes so here we have three heroes so they get a starting hand of five of these spell cards The heroes each have their own decks denoted with a different symbol on both that side and also on the backs. And so each player will take their deck and a hand of free cards. So the way a game will work is you'll do two encounters plus a boss encounter with the Blight Lord here. So the way an encounter will work is the heroes will pick one of the two stacks and they will reveal a location. And that location will then tell them what is going on here. What, how many monsters they're going to face and any special rules for this special location. So in this case we'll say they have to face three monsters. So we just draw three monster cards and that will be what they have to defeat this encounter for the encounter to end. The hit points on everything is shown in the pentagon at the top of the card and this goes for the heroes and for the monsters it's red for the monsters blue for the heroes though also on any of these cards anything with this gray dot is a permanent ability that doesn't cost an action point whereas if it has a green dot then that costs an action point to use now if such as with the heroes or some of the blight lords cards you'll see that you have a yellow dot. That means it's reactive, so it doesn't cost an action, you just have to play it at the appropriate time. So the way an encounter will work is once you've got it all set up like this, you then have the Blight Lord take their turn. And on the Blight Lord's turn, he gets a number of action points equal to the number of heroes. So in this situation he has three action points. Now what he can do with those action points is use the actions on his own card, use the actions on the monsters cards or use the actions from his spell cards that are in his hand. Once he's done his free actions, either doing damage or healing or whatever it might be it's doing, it would then be the hero's turn. And the heroes will take turns depending on the speed denoted on their character. So this one here says slowest so he would go last and each of these heroes only gets one action point so same principles apply that they can do actions and that they have permanent abilities in effect as with the blight lord so this encounter would end either when the blight lord has gotten all heroes hp down to zero at which point that's actually the end of the game and the blight lord has won or all of the monsters are eliminated, so all of their HPs are gone, they've been wiped out one by one till they're gone, 
And that's then the end of the encounter. At which point the heroes are able to power up because they get treasure, which will give them new and interesting abilities. So each character will get to take one treasure. You then move on to the next encounter, revealing a new location card and following what that location card says and having more monsters come out, which will also get killed until you get to your final encounter. At which point you flip your Blightlord card rather than drawing a location card and now they're fighting the Blightlord. Of course, once you've got to this stage, it's all or nothing. Either the heroes are dead or the Blightlord dies. And that's the game. Okay, so now you've got a better idea of what Beneath Nexus is, what do I think of it? Well, we'll start with the artwork, and I'm not a big fan of the artwork. I do really enjoy fantasy artwork, but this artwork doesn't feel especially well done. I mean, you look at some of these cards, they just kind of look a bit blurred and washed out. So I'm not keen on that. I guess it is just a style thing, but that doesn't appeal to me. Now, component quality, I'm not going to touch because none of this is final. It's a prototype and they haven't said any of this is anywhere near final. So what does that leave us with? Well, the gameplay. So, yeah, the, my big issue with this is that it's dubbed as a dungeon crawl because it doesn't have that. It doesn't feel like a dungeon crawl to me. The whole idea of a dungeon crawl is you're exploring, you're investigating one room, the next, you might find nothing, you might find something, you find a treasure chest, you open it. It doesn't feel like that. Yes, you have these location cards you're turning over so you've got different locations each time, but it doesn't really give you a sense of exploration, a sense of choosing which direction you're going in. And that's kind of my big fault with this game, that it doesn't quite live up to what it's labelled itself as. That said, it is an interesting, good game. The way the heroes work is very interesting. They're all different. They all feel different. They've got their own individual decks that give them a different spin. You know, your fighters aren't just your fighters. That is interesting. And then you get the same with these Nexus Lords here. Each one of these, yes, they have a shared pool of spell cards that they're using, but... They each have their own few that are thrown in there as well, and as well as having their own abilities permanently on their cards, they have a different feel, a different way they play that will appeal to different people and need to be tackled in different ways. So, there are a lot of cards in this game, as you can see, we've got lots of these big cards with locations, heroes, nexus laws, and then they each have their own decks. And that's both a good and a bad thing, because it means there's a lot of variety there and a lot of interest. But it also means that it can be a bit fiddly, and I think the box and insert is going to be key to this, and I don't know yet what their plans are for that. Because if you were able to have all the heroes separated into a nice little area with their own little big card and their deck, for example, that would speed things up. You're not having to sort out the cards each time and go, all right, that's that hero's cards, that's that hero's cards. And especially so with the Nexus Lords, it's a fiddly thing. And I, the insert isn't going to solve this because you mix in one deck with another. And then each time you've got to separate that out at the end. Or next time you come to play, you're going to have to separate it out. Or you just play with the same Nexus Lord each time, which yeah, doesn't feel like you should be doing that. So that's a bit of a negative there. Now, what else is there for me to say about this game? Well, there's a lot of decisions, a lot of choices. It's a really interesting game, but it feels like a dueling game. So if you are a big fan of those dueling games, you know, where you construct your deck and it's like, this creature does this, this creature does this, I summon this creature, you know, like Magic the Gathering, uh, Netrunner, all of these sort of things, then you may well really enjoy this. But keep in mind, this rather than being that one-on-one -on -one, head to head is an all these one, which is different, it is interesting, 
the fact that the people choose who gets hurt in different ways depending on if it's a monster or if it's the Nexus Lord themselves doing something is interesting because you always have to bear in mind when you're setting up a chain, alright well if I say I'm going to damage this person I can't then use a monster to try and do that damage because I'll just you know switch it to someone else there is a huge amount going on in this and it will appeal to a market now the big thing other than it not living up to what it's billed as but still being an interesting game the big kind of drawback for me is player numbers on this because it's four to six players I think you've got to have a dungeon lord you've got to have that Nexus person. I don't like that all these one a lot of the time like, because I tend to be the GM type role all the time so if you're having that it kind of detracts. If you're not then it's fine but you still need free heroes and I've tried several variants in this to make it work as a two-player game and the big issue really comes down to those heroes because you can try using one hero it just doesn't work one hero v's the Nexus Lord it just falls really flat, there's not enough going on, there's not enough choices you can make, there's not enough decisions there. And then, so the other option is someone controls free heroes, but then they've got three separate hands of cards, and it's, right, I do this character, then I do this character, then I do this character, it can get really bogged down, and it just stops you really getting into the feel of you are that character that you could have if you had enough players. So it does work with the larger player numbers, it doesn't work for lower player numbers, so that is quite restrictive and may put a lot of people off such as myself. Okay, I do hope you've found this video useful and interesting and of course if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.